So thank you for, uh, thank you for coming to this session. Uh, my name's Eddie Ranieri, and uh, I'm with the Sterling X Project. And uh, today what I want to talk to you about is how Sterling X is solving uh, upgrades and updates um, with our architecture. It'll be both uh, how we solve it for the customer and also some challenges we encounter as a project for what we are and things like that. So here's kind of what my overview is of what I'm planning to talk about. I don't know if there's a bunch of you out there that know what Sterling X is, but I thought we'd level set on it. Is there people out there that know Sterling X? Okay, that's pretty good. That's, that's actually more than I thought, so that's good to know. Uh, and then I'll, I'll go into the upgrading, how upgrading, how upgrading works and how, how it deals with it, and the challenges and how we've solved those challenges in Sterling X as well. And then I'll leave you with uh, ways you can get involved, ways you can kick the tires on the project, things that you might want to be doing next, and, and how you can contact me or anybody else in the Sterling X uh, organization to help you with the project. So real quick, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but you know, what is Sterling X? It, it is an OIF confirmed project, so it's an open source project that's here. It's, the, it's a complete um, infrastructure for running clouds at the edge. So uh, that includes Kubernetes, that includes open so OpenStack as well, and all the components around it. Uh, we work on scale, so the project is all about scalability, reliability, um, geographically low distributed solutions, distributed architecture of the, of the clouds, uh, as well as you know, how to maintain those clouds and how to make them uh, reliable. Lastly, we are proven, uh, we are in 5G networks today uh, uh, across the uh, world, uh, so we are a proven commodity. Uh, we're not just a telecom solution, we're an edge solution where if you run low latency applications, if you have a low latency need, you want to put your cloud at the edge, you want to manage Kubernetes or OpenStack functions at the edge as well. There's a lot of other use cases that could be, it just so happens that you know, telecom is, is one of the leading candidates right now. And then just to give you an overview of the platform and uh, what's in the platform, it is a, a single ISO a single ISO distribution that includes everything from the Linux kernel, the services that the Linux kernel uses, uh, the pieces in the middle that you see there that are marked uh, fault management and host management, software management, all those. We call those our flock services. And that's the bread and butter of, of Starling X and the services that allow us to manage the individual nodes within the cloud, configure the individual nodes, uh, handle um, to make sure that there, there, there's no node that's down or fault failure. So that is kind of the configuration pieces of our flock services. And then above that stack is your virtualization stack, whether it be Kubernetes first, it is a Kubernetes native uh, solution. Uh, and then we allow you to run other applications, whether they be your applications or customers' applications, or if they're OpenStack, we can actually run that. Uh, the OpenStack managing services are fully containerized as well. So I mentioned scalability, um, and again, at the edge, it's, scalability is very important. Uh, it, we scale from a single solution, single cloud server. Take a single server, it's a full stack, full cloud. Kubernetes master runs on it, it's, it's fully managed and independent on its own. And then we can scale, as you see, from uh, our first HA model, which would be a duplex. We call it, it's called a duplex. And uh, that has two servers. And then that'll also scale to where you have more of a, a traditional rack solution where everything's running on its own server. The one thing about Sterling X is that scale can occur in service. So you can deploy it as a simplex or a single server solution and you can grow it based on your needs out there in the deployment land. You just put more servers out there and you can grow, those, grow that solution and scale it as you want to scale. So the challenge, one of the challenges is obviously with, ed, with, ed, with edge solutions and edge solutions is how you manage it and how you, and how you keep track of what's going on and even distribute things down to it that need to be synchronized across the platform. So, Sterling X has 
something they call the system controller or the distributed cloud manager. Um, I think of it as a cloud, a CAS manager, right? It's a cloud manager. So it, it is a Sterling X cloud as well. It's running Kubernetes. Um, it's, it, it can run workload as well if you want. And what it has in it is an additional feature that allows for it to manage edge clouds and orchestrate edge cloud functions that edge clouds need to orchestrate. Uh, as well as anything that needs to be synchronized between the edge clouds or that needs to be done, that can all be done, again, from the system controller level. So, I, like I said, I think of it as a, as a manager of the clouds. All right, that's my overview. So, hopefully it wasn't too long. Let's talk about upgrading. So, uh, upgrading is, uh, of course, different than, anything, than other things because uh, upgrading or updating is uh, you're trying to do it while you're in service, right? So there's a, a lot of things to think about when you're in service and how it handles. Uh, today, Sterling X, uh, the way it works is it actually does these steps to, uh, to upgrade the system. The first thing it does is the system controllers or the, the manager of the clouds, it will perform an OS and services upgrade. It'll keep the Kubernetes version, keep the Kubernetes system running, but it'll perform the uh, OS and services upgrades. Once the CAS manager or the system controller is upgraded, then it will ask the edge clouds to perform their upgrade. It orchestrates it. So it's not doing the actual upgrades of the edge clouds, it's telling the edge clouds to do their upgrade. That's the difference with the distri distributed way it handles that, okay? After that, then we're preparing, it prepares, Sterling X prepares for upgrading of Kubernetes. And there's challenges around that because your workload in order to stay in service can't go, may not be able to go from one version of Kubernetes to the other without its applications needing to be updated. So what, we, what, what happens is Sterling X updates the applications. Um, those of you that raised your hand on, on uh, Sterling X knows that Sterling X also has, and, and I'll get into it a little bit, they also have applications that you can deploy through, through Sterling X. We have, we have our own applications that are part of Sterling X. Those, those components are also upgraded as well during that sequence. And then lastly, after all that's done and everything is good, then Kubernetes can be upgraded and the, the, the plugins that can be done with it. And all that's handled at an orchestrated view. So from the system controller, it's orchestrating the edge clouds to perform those upgrades. The edge clouds are performing the upgrades on their own and reporting that information, pass or fail, success or failure, back up to the system controller. This kind of is a diagram depicting what I was trying to say. Uh, again, from the system controller point of view, the system controller says, hey, I need to do this upgrade or update. It does itself first, and then it tells the subclouds to go down and do the orchestration and of the upgrades of those clouds. One of the other things that the system controller supports is the ability to do what we call edge cloud grouping. So you can create specialized groups that allow you to only upgrade certain groups at a time during the particular upgrade and orchestration event. Down at the, at the cloud level, so at each cloud level, depending upon the, the deployment of the cloud level, but at the, each cloud level, um, the cloud level then does its orchestration independently on its own at, the, uh, at this level. And this is the process that it takes through. I won't spend um, a ton of time on this, but essentially we upgrade the standby controller first. Once the standby controller has been upgraded, then, we, then it switches to the standby controller. That becomes active. It updates. It's, it's the old controller. So now you got two controllers running with the new software and the new update. And then once you have that, so you know your HA is still fully available, then you'll go ahead and start orchestrating the workloads, uh, the workers, excuse me. And the workers can be done in parallel. They can be done simultaneously as well, uh, in parallel or sequentially based on what 
you know, what needs to happen in, uh, in that cloud. If the cloud has an HA application running on it, then you could probably, you would probably not want to do them all at the same time. You may want to do them sequentially in that manner. So kind of summarizes what upgrades are about and updates are about for us and, and what Sterling X thinks about when it is. So we support, Sterling X supports, um, supports the upgrading with minimum to no service disruption. And I, I say minimum to no, and the reason is is because in order to be no, there's certain things that have to happen. Uh, in some cases, a server reboot is required. That's gonna cause that server to go offline for a while. If your application is running on that server and it doesn't have an HA component to it, then of course you're gonna lose a little bit of service. Uh, um, if, your H, if your application is HA, then it wouldn't be affected by that. Redeployment of an application during an upgrade is not required. So we maintain all the states, we maintain the, the deployment scenarios and, and the Kubernetes information for it. So as we're doing the upgrade, when the upgrade is complete, we restart the service and everything else. It's just a matter of the services being able to run with that new version. We minimize as much as possible pod restarting and stopping and, and doing things like that. We try, try to make sure that, uh, you know, that that's minimized um, as well. And then lastly, I already touched on that, but that is that, you know, for zero loss, obviously, applications have to deal with, the, with some things as well for HA. So let's talk about the challenges. Um, and some of these challenges, when we're talking through them, they're both at the deployment scenario and the challenges we're solving for, the project is solving for edge deployments. And also, from a project perspective, the challenges we're having with the fact that we're this overall integrating project of pulling in other upstream open source components like Kubernetes and things like that. So at the distributed cloud level, so when you start talking about clouds, you know, edge clouds um, versus, you know, traditional clouds that are in a data center or something, you're talking about thousands, you know, or hundreds of thousands. You're talking about a bunch of clouds. And managing just the volume of those number of clouds is, 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 is enormous, right? And the way we've solved that is by using that distributed cloud and the, and, and the system controllers to distribute as much functionality down to those clouds, but to have an overarching monitor or manager that's looking after it so you can easily tell it what to do and tell those clouds what to do. Second problem with edge is, you know, um, edge, again, it's, it's network is spotty. You know, it could be microwave, it could be fiber, uh, it, could be, um, it could be shared with other workloads that's got higher precedence over to take over it, so it's got a quality of service thing. It doesn't, the manageability of it. So um, when you're talking about the edge clouds, the importance of having them be independent and making sure you distribute the appropriate control at the right level of it. Uh, Sterling X has done that because they're standalone clouds at the edge. They can, they can scale the, the applications. They can restart things if they have to. They can report failures and things, but it is at the edge. So um, one of the things that we make sure we do is we push that control where it makes sense. The other thing we do is we, um, we don't do the updates. When the updates are occurring, we prepare the updates on the edge cloud first in a, in a staged area. So we stage it in a repo. And then once we know that that repo has been successfully replicated down to each edge cloud, we will initiate the, the upgrade. That's outside the orchestration. So that's another orchestration mechanism step that takes place independently. It can be done you know, over time and everything else prior to you actually executing the upgrade. So when you execute the upgrade, the controller on the subcloud is performing the upgrade and he's using the data that he needs to perform the upgrade locally. So he's not going across that network. He's off of that network. And then the last one is, again, you have all these edge clouds. Edge clouds sometimes overlap each other and they use that for a redundancy or, or, or a, a capability or they need to have 
at least a few of those edge clouds in a particular region up and running still. So you can't just hit the button and say, hey, I want you to upgrade all, because when you try to upgrade all, you know, it, it, we're going to simultaneously start upgrading them, and you could bring down service at a, at a larger scale. So with, with Sterling X, what happens is the, uh, we have this grouping capability, so you can create multiple levels of groups. Those groups will, will take over and perform the upgrades, and you can run the upgrades on those groups so you can prevent any kind of outage like that that's, a, that's outside of that. Upgrading the flock services, so uh, the OS and the flock services. So, um, you know, some of the stuff that's happening with Sterling X project today uh, is, is, is causing challenges that we kind of brought on our own as Sterling X uh, just because of what we needed to do. These are some of the, the examples. So we are moving uh, from CentOS to a Debian version. Uh, that's one of the things that this version is doing. Uh, which means that there's, you know, obviously differences between CentOS and Debian in the configuration of the files, the layouts, uh, the package manager, all kinds of things that we have to account for. So um, in an upgrade, you want to have that seamless, right? You don't want that to be something that causes any service outage. And so what Sterling X is doing for that is we're, as part of the upgrade process, we're, we're taking extra care to make sure that we've captured all the data and we can, we can even seamlessly migrate from that OS, from the two OSs. The second thing is uh, OS tree migration. So uh, Sterling X is moving to OS tree migration and um, OS, tree, OS tree is great. There's a lot of good things with OS tree, uh, but from an architectural viewpoint of, of Sterling X, there is challenges around how we deliver upgrades and how we deliver patches versus how we used to do it to move into the new stuff. So again, um, that's something the project has gotten involved in and is taking care of. Uh, and, and, and we're making sure we move to that so that the same process that used to be used in the old Sterling X versions for, for the same thing is handled. And the differences between the OS tree or non-OS tree versions are transparent. Uh, Sterling X uses something called Armada, which is a, another service integrated project, and that project went end of life. Um, Armada manages our Sterling X applications. So we have a certificate manager, we have um, manager service, we have a, a Windows Active Directory service, it's all part of the Sterling X project. Uh, we have different storage functionality services, all those. So, Managing the end of life of a, of a particular application that Sterling X uses, again, was requiring us to make sure we find a suitable substitute in the upstream, which we think we found a really good one in Flux CD. And then obviously during the upgrade, as part of the upgrade, is migration, the metadata, migration, all of the um, management pieces from Armada over to uh, Flux CD. And then air-gapped installs, so it's an edge deployment. It has all the networking stuff you're talking about. We've talked about it. It, it doesn't necessarily have connectivity to the internet, and it has spotty connectivity back to the core. So um, Sterling X has to handle air-gapping and air-gapped installs. And I kind of alluded to that before, but we have an orchestration mechanism that pushes the cache down to the edge clouds prior to anything starting, validates it, and then make sure that it works and, and hands it out. And lastly, um, Sterling X, you know, we're, we're trying to be active with, uh, you know, as current as we can and stay current as, we, as, as, as possible. And one of the things about staying current as possible and, and things like that is um, a lot of times even the Linux kernel distribution that we've picked on or chose, it doesn't have the latest drivers for some of the latest hardware. Network cards, accelerated cards, uh, things like that that are cutting edge. So Sterling X in the project, it is actually pulling those drivers and the firmware, integrating those components as well into the project. So as part of that Sterling X integration effort, um, the, the project has to take into account that there's Again, these external drivers that we need to make sure are there and available. 
from a Kubernetes perspective and the challenges at the field and the challenges of doing upgrades. So again, uh, self-inflicted a little bit, but Sterling X is moving to OS Tree. Uh, OS Tree has a mechanism to uh, you know, protect certain areas of the disk and make it read, read only. So like the old way of doing a Kubernetes upgrades where you're using alternative to or, or sim links when you want new versions of Kubernetes, um, you can't do with OS tree. So uh, the project has moved to a mount, mount bind issue, a mount bind scenario uh, similar to others where we, we'll, we install the new versions of Kubernetes and then do use mount bind to move to the new version or back to the old version as needed. Um, the reason we had the application step, if you remember earlier, I talked about the application step where the upgrade, this step to upgrade applications. Uh, as you move through Kubernetes or any other, uh, you know, project, things get deprecated, things are new. Uh, and so in order to stay in service during an upgrade or an update, you have to have a chance for the application to either be updated or handle the situation where you know, Kubernetes is upgraded and it, it can run still. So um, that's why we have to be careful in our orchestration and careful in the way we lay things out so that we make sure that it's, um, that, that it keeps service, continues service. And then the big one is release gap. So, um, and this is pretty much touched on for the rest of the presentation, but it's, we, Sterling X releases twice a year. Kubernetes releases every four months, and then there's the plug-in releases as well. So uh, specific to Kubernetes, what that means is uh, Sterling X wants to maintain the most current version of Kubernetes as it can for every release. Most likely that's a chance that we're gonna have to upgrade two versions of Kubernetes at a time in one upgrade, um, just by virtue of six versus four months. So we have to solve that. Sterling X has to solve that problem. Um, and what we do today is we actually upgrade multiple times. If there's two versions of Kubernetes, we would do two upgrades of Kubernetes. But we would get the service up and running and then upgrade again to the next service with it up and running. And that's because of the next challenge, which is today Kubernetes doesn't support skipping, right? You have to go the minor release to the next minor release. And it doesn't have a concept like OpenStack does where you can take the control plane offline and do two-step upgrades and then bring it back online. And then lastly, um, Sterling X does some things around Kubelet in order to differentiate between platform services and application services. And it's all about low latency and, and, and providing the, the maximum to the applications. So Sterling X does have to modify Kubelet right now. Um, and we have to build Kubelet as part of our release as well as uh, the Golang as well. So as we do upgrades with Kubernetes, we've got to worry about the Kubelet mapping as well as uh, um, Golang. Plugins are more of the same, but um, essentially, you know, what we see in, in the community right now is Calico is our CNI that we use. It doesn't really have a formal release. Uh, it supports three versions. We want to use the latest as much as possible. And, uh, and so we're challenged with pulling the right Kuber a Calico version. Maltus has no formal statement that, that the, the project has seen, and uh, it's the same challenge. So. As we pull in these new plugins, we've got to take a look at them and we've got to figure out if they'll work with the version of Kubernetes that they'll work with and how well they'll function with an in-service upgrade. And even some like NetApp, they actually restrict you. You can't, uh, you can't upgrade to an unsupported version of it. So uh, some of the plugins are doing that where they, they won't even allow it to load. So it's a concern that you have to worry about that the project takes care of to make sure that it's all working. So in the end, Kubernetes gets upgraded with the latest and greatest supported plugins as well. All right, so hopefully that interests you and piqued your interest enough or gave you enough interest to say, I don't know what he's talking about, let's go figure it out on my own. 
Um, so methods for you to get involved or, or, or ways you can learn more. These are the events that uh, Sterling X is doing today, uh, this week. Come visit more, come visit us, um, come, come more sessions. If you just want to see it, you just want to install it if you're a hands-on type person, uh, Sinjin mirrors it, mirrors the ISO, so you don't have to build anything. And um, you can download it immediately. docs.sterlingx.io actually has an install guide that includes installing it on bare metal as well as virtual. So you can install it virtually just to see what's going on as well. And then, you know, traditional mailing lists and other things that, uh, that you need to know. If that really excites you and you get excited about that, then we have um, ways to contribute. So these are all the, the links into our, uh, our places where the bugs are, uh, where we have thought leadership and, and new ideas and where we're um, starting early, early thoughts, our storyboards for our actually design and implementation. And the last one is, um, is the wiki page for meeting the groups, meeting the leads of the groups, reaching out to them. Um, maybe there's an interest in only one or two things that you have, so that, that'll definitely give you where that goes. And that's what I got. Thank you. And I got a few stickers. I don't have enough for the room. You can meet us at the stab, but if you're, if, you're, if you're interested in stickers, you can come get some. I can leave them right here. Some questions? Sure. Uh, what about rollbacks? <laughs> <laughs> um, so rollbacks for, rollbacks for updates, uh, it, it's fully done within the project itself today. Uh, rollbacks for Kubernetes upgrades. Um, there's a path to which you can still roll back within Sterling X, but there is a point where as you proceed too far, which is really, to answer your question specifically, once both controllers have been upgraded to that Kubernetes, um, your you, you, rollback isn't there yet. And we do agree that that's something that needs to be worked on. Um, it probably belongs outside of Sterling X so that others can utilize that capability uh, as well. But yeah, absolutely. You said you're moving to Debian. Are you going to support Pythos real-time kernel? Yep. Yeah. So the question was, is, is, is moving the movement to Debian, will it still support the real-time kernel that it has today? And the answer is yes, it will. It'll have both. So it's optional. You get to choose that as part of your installation method if you want to use which what you want to use. How do you do uh, OpenStack upgrades? OpenStack upgrades? Yeah. So today, OpenStack upgrades. I believe um, I believe today, OpenStack upgrades is done through the. Um, they're all done through the. Armada and through and it's going to be through Flux CD. So it would be an upgrade of their of their pieces, of their pods. Yeah. So it's it's because it's Kubernetes. We can update each one and we can work our way through it how, how we do it. Yeah, because then, uh, then you have, uh, don't have the live, uh, live migration, uh, right? Uh, between the VMs and the robots. Yeah. I don't I don't believe today we have live migration on Sterling X. I don't believe live migration is, but I can confirm that. Uh, we have one guy out here, you know? Yeah, okay. Uh, another question. Um, what is the difference between the system controller and the uh, cube edge? Because basically it does a similar thing if you know cube edge. I don't know cube edge. No, I'm interested. I'll be interested to talk to you about it. I mean, um, there could be very much similarities. The, the the system controller does know a little bit about Sterling X, right? So it, it, it's, it, it's all API based, uh, certainly. And um, the flock services that I talked about in the middle, those are all REST API based components as well. And so there are pieces of the system controller that knows about that. And there's also dependencies like, for instance, we manage, um, in some cases, we can manage the, 
the usernames uh, from the system controller and synchronize those down to the subclouds. So the same username and passwords work across if you wanted to deploy it that way. Certificates, there's certain certificates that are shared amongst the entire certificate. So there may be some overlap. I, I, don't, I don't know. Happy to talk to you about it for sure. Control plane? Yes. Uh, no, um, no. But I'm not sure I fully. So, you have a reason you're asking this question. So, so remember that the edge clouds are all independent. They're all independent Kubernetes masters and, and OpenStack scheduling systems. Yep. So the only thing we're doing um, from the system controllers down across the control plane would be. Um, initiating commands that we want the subcloud to do and getting information back from the subclouds is what they're doing. How about audit trail? Yeah, that's all. Uh, there's pieces of that that get pushed back up into the control system controllers, absolutely. Um, but it would be an audit trail based on only each individual cloud, right? It wouldn't be an audit trail intermixed with all the other clouds right now, today. Yeah. No, thank you for being my stand-up guy. <laughs> my stand -up. No, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't mean that. It, uh, where, where, where we got it? Where, when, when Sterling X was start, first brought out and and started developing, you know, the concept of it was edge computing is something different than core or different than something in a data center. Uh, it can run in a data center. We have the same amount of scaling capabilities. You may not even run distributed cloud in that case or the system controllers in that case. You would just stand up a cloud like you would at any level. I, I think where, we, where, where the project is gone is that's table stakes because even at the edge, you might run an edge with 200 nodes, right? So, um, but what, what, what we've migrated to solving as well is behind, beyond just a single cloud, let's get them out to the edge, let's get them so they can be on a single server and scale, and then just the challenges associated with that. A lot of those you, you wouldn't run into if you put it in a data center for sure. And it is a single ISO, so all you do is when you install it, you, you provision it a certain way. So you provision it as a regular cloud, it doesn't, and, and, it, and it wouldn't be an edge cloud. You just say it's the regular cloud that's standalone all by itself. You provision it to be a system controller so that it can do the system controller functions. And then you provision it to be an edge cloud. And the difference between an edge cloud and a normal cloud is it says this guy up here at the top, he's going to ask you to do stuff, he's going to manage you, and he's going to send you stuff. Switch it. Switch to it. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. So, um, absolutely, we we call it re rehoming. But the the ability, yeah, you can actually stand up a subcloud. So the question is, can you move a subcloud? You can stand up an edge cloud. It's under system controller A. You stand up system controller B, and you say, hey, I want to move that subcloud over. It 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 works. Yes. We can also we're also working on newer newer things as well around. Even now you got edge clouds, you might have edge clouds and you want to combine edge clouds. So there's features coming out around that as well with the project. Yes? Uh, how about those soft clouds and different software levels? I mean, if they are on the same central side, so and you want to, for example, two of them, so that is other ones can be still the also. But, did you get my point? No. So, if I understood it right, first you are print the central side, That's right. and then let's say you have four sub clouds. I got it. And you are those two, so can this last two be the third one? Yeah, ab absolutely. So the question is, is how do we handle, how do we handle when we're upgrading the old versus the new? Yeah, and and that is a challenge, right? Because in some cases you may be changing the API or changing things. But we handle a, a, an N minus one 
pretty much for the life cycle until you get everything upgraded. It could be months, that could be years. Um, we don't offer the, like, it's not necessarily you're going to stay at, at, at different versions, but you do have time. There's no urgency to do it. No. No, absolutely not. I mean, we even have to do that internally to the node itself. When we upgrade the standby controller, the standby controller needs to know how to deal with the old version. Um, we don't go back many versions, so there is an upgrade, an N minus one concept that we, we do support. Is there an upper limit to how many subclass the controller can um, Yeah, there, we've tested it to 1,000. We've tested it to 1,000 and we've tested it to 500 simultaneous updates at a time. But it, it you know, in the, in the real world, it's going to go, it, it'll, get, it'll get more. There, there'll be more. I mean, there's bandwidth and other limitations that we've got to take into account, but, you know, um, but right now it's 1,000. So more, more edge clouds, you would horizontally scale. Correct. Well. That's correct. Yep, so if you had a 2,000 deployment scenario for edge clouds, you'd, you'd, you'd instantiate two system controllers today.